Hello everyone. Welcome back to Elevate in Spirit. Today, I will share with you another empowering episode of Financial Stewardship. I'm thrilled to be here with you today as we delve deeper into the transformative power of financial stewardship. Over the past two weeks, we've explored profound truths that have revolutionized countless lives, including my own. You see, for over six decades, I've walked this journey with God, serving in ministry for over five decades. But it wasn't until I embraced the revelation on finances that I truly experienced a breakthrough. Many of you joining us today might not realize that you wouldn't be seeing me on this platform if I hadn't embraced these truths. The impact goes beyond just my personal life. It extends to the lives of thousands through our ministry. And all of this is possible because of understanding financial stewardship. Throughout our series, we've explored various passages, from Luke 16 to Ephesians 4.28, unveiling the principles of stewardship and prosperity. Let's dive into Deuteronomy 28, which outlines blessings and curses. Through Jesus, we've been redeemed from the curse, allowing us to walk in the blessings promised in verses 8 to 12. Let's start with Deuteronomy 28 to 8 to 10. Jesus says, The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land He is giving you. The Lord will establish you as His holy people as He promised you on oath, if you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in obedience to Him. Then all the peoples on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they will fear you. This verse is a part of the blessings promised to the Israelites if they obeyed the commandments of God. It means that God's favor will be on them, making sure that they are successful and wealthy in everything they do. The passage underlines how important it is to follow God's instructions and says that the Israelites' obedience will show the other nations that they are a unique people whom God has chosen. In this way, the text emphasizes the link between obedience, blessing, and God's presence being seen by His chosen people. Next is Deuteronomy 28, 11-12. Jesus says, The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity. In the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock and the crops of your ground. In the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. The verses speak of abundance in various aspects of life, including prosperity in offspring, livestock, and crop yields. There are many symbolic images in this book that show how successful the Israelites were in both their family and farming lives. As long as they keep the promise God made with His chosen people, they will receive this blessing. It stresses how important obedience and loyalty are as conditions for receiving God's favor and gifts. These verses serve as a reminder of the mutually beneficial nature of the relationship between God and His people, where obedience leads to abundance and prosperity. God doesn't simply rain down money from heaven. He gives us the power, the anointing, the ability to generate wealth. But we must take action. As it says in Deuteronomy 8.18, But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth, and so confirms His covenant, which He swore to your ancestors, as it is today. The verse makes it clear that God is the one who gives the Israelites the power to make money. It motivates them to realize that their material blessings are not just the result of their hard work or skills, but are gifts from God. When the Israelites thank God for making their lives better, it reminds them of their promise to follow Him. In this verse, covenant refers to the deal that God made with the Israelites. God promised to bless and protect them if they stayed true to Him. The Israelites are motivated to keep following God's rules and keeping their relationship with Him. By remembering how faithful he has been in keeping this promise throughout their history. Overall, Deuteronomy 8:18 tells the Israelites to remember to be humble and thankful for the good things God has done for them, and to never forget where their wealth comes from. It stresses how important it is to recognize God's power and faithfulness in every part of their lives. But if you're just thinking, I'm going to focus on these Bible verses, and trust that God will meet all my needs according to His riches and glory through Christ Jesus, then you're not getting anywhere. 
I'll be teaching on that exact verse, Philippians 4.19. Jesus says, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. In this particular passage, Paul is expressing gratitude to the Philippians for their financial support and encouragement during his time of need. He tells them that God will take care of all their needs, because God is the source of all good things. This promise comes from the fact that God has so much wealth that they can't be measured or topped. Because they have a connection with Jesus Christ, who is the bridge between God and people, this provision is possible. Paul is telling the Philippians to believe that God will take care of their needs and not worry about them by reminding them of God's faithfulness and provision. And there's many people that are just sitting there doing nothing, which in 2 Thessalonians 10, Jesus says, For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule, the one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. This verse comes from a message that Paul wrote to the church in Thessalonica. This part of the letter is where Paul talks about how some members of the community are being unproductive. People in Thessalonica should not expect to be fed by the community if they are able to work, but choose not to. This is something that he and his friends taught them while they were with them. This idea emphasizes that each person is responsible for their actions, and that hard work and productivity are important. It tells people that they should work and give to the community instead of relying on other people to do it for them. It also brings up the idea that work isn't just a way to make money, it's also a way to be a part of the community and make a difference for the better. Let me share with you a powerful testimony of Ruth and Michael, who embraced these principles and witnessed incredible transformation in their lives. From overcoming poverty mindsets to investing in real estate, their journey is a testament to the power of stewardship. Ruth says, we used to live paycheck to paycheck, but through the teachings on financial stewardship, we learned to seek first God's kingdom and everything else followed. Michael says, We started small, but with persistence and faith, we've built a successful portfolio. And now we're on a mission to empower others to do the same, whether in the UK, India, or beyond. Their experience is only one of many examples that illustrate what happens when we combine the principles of God with our financial situation. Therefore, as we get to the end of today's episode, I would like to encourage you to take a step toward becoming a better steward of your finances. Know that you have the ability to change the course of your financial future, whether you do so through using our resources or by seeking guidance. Thank you for joining us today. If you found this video inspiring, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more topics like this. Together, let's empower prosperity and transform lives. Until next time, stay blessed and continue walking in financial stewardship from Elevate in Spirit.